It seems that after Tesla made the switch to using BYD's lithium ion blade batteries last year at their Gigafactory in Berlin, that the floodgates have essentially been opened. Now a number of different automakers, including Kia, General Motors, and others are also using BYD blade batteries. Not to mention Toyota, who by the way says that they're inferior because they claim that their solid state batteries will be so much better. I'm not joking. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans. Great to see you. Now, We've just seen this news, right? The new Kia EV5. I don't know if this will just apply to the Kia EV5 made in China or if it's going to apply to other Kia EV5s, but we've seen the battery. It will be a BYD blade battery. Lincoln's new EVs, BYD blade battery, right? Bizarrely, Ford chose not to use BYD's blade battery in China. They chose to use BYD's ternary batteries, which are the ones who've had, that have had the issues. Anyhow, Toyota also are using BOD blade battery, both in the Corolla and the BZ4X made in China. So as you can see, there's been a, a real resurgence in the use of LFP, not a resurgence, but an incredible emergence of the use of BOD's blade batteries, their LFP technology. I think more and more automakers are saying, do we want the hassles of ternary batteries? Are they really an advantage? Are they really an advantage? Well, I don't think they really are. If you look at the range and the actual energy density, something doesn't add up. I mean, companies are saying, brands are saying, they're making these kinds of comments, right? Are we using ternary batteries? We're we using NCA or NCM chemistry batteries because they have longer range, better energy density than LFP. Now, if that were the case, why is it that cars like the Volkswagen ID3 or ID4 don't have superior range based on their size and battery pack size in comparison to say a Tesla Model Y, which has an LFP battery, which should have lower energy density. Doesn't make sense. Something doesn't add up. Now, here is the very interesting part of this entire story. Not only are more and more automakers beginning to use BYD's blade batteries, but BYD just applied for a patent in the United States for an M3P battery. Now, you probably all have heard that the M3P battery is very likely to be the battery that's going to be used in the new Tesla Model 3, the Highland version. CATL disclosed that there's no price increase in using their new M3P battery versus their previous LFP battery. So what exactly is an M3P battery? And why is this the first anyone's ever heard of BYD jumping in on the M3P bandwagon? Well, Interestingly, it's actually a hybrid battery. It's a hybrid battery that is a combination between an NCA chemistry battery or an NCM chemistry battery, I should say, nickel, cobalt, and manganese, and a combination between that and an LFP battery, lithium iron phosphate. So it really is sort of like trying to combine the best of both worlds. These new LFP batteries with manganese, a manganese dope cathode, essentially, what they end up being is they have all the advantages, apparently, we're hearing of an LFP battery, a longer life cycle, more cycle charges, the ability to charge the battery to 100% and not really affect the battery, the ability, the ability to discharge the battery to a very low charge, state of discharge, not really affect the battery. There's some pretty significant advantages to an LFP battery. But the trade-off is theoretically lower energy density. And it is true they have slightly lower energy. However, the M3P battery technology, because it's able to use manganese in the cathode and some other things, it's basically able to replicate the energy density of a ternary battery. So CATL was meant to be the first company worldwide and the only company that we knew of worldwide that were using these new M3P batteries. Tesla, of course, were meant to be the biggest customer. They do have some other customers in China as well. However, we had not heard any news whatsoever of BYD using this battery chemistry? Nothing. We hadn't heard a single skerrick of news. And all of a sudden, this patent comes out showing that BYD have patented almost the exact same battery chemistry that CATL are using for the M3P battery in China. Now, the patent applies to the United States. I'm curious to know how CATL feels about this. Is this going to be a full-blown war now between BYD and CATL? That's what it looks like. It really looks like BYD are firing shots at CATL saying, bring it on. The war is on. If that's what it looks like, maybe I'm reading this all wrong. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. Either way, what does this mean for the industry? It means more and more car manufacturers are recognizing the benefits of LFP 
battery technology. The more recalls we see, right? How often do we see recalls for lithium ion phosphate batteries over the past 12 months? How many times have you seen any? I haven't seen any. I've read hundreds, of, no, not true. I've read thousands of articles, looked at thousands of battery topics. I haven't seen any recalls this year of LFP batteries. There might've been isolated incidents or a car here, a car there, but not any big recalls like what we have seen for lithium ternary batteries, in particular batteries from LG Chem, but others have had them. Now remember, one of the big benefits with an LFP battery is they're also much less likely to be involved in fires. They generally don't set themselves on fire in an impact, a crash impact. Not always, but generally they don't. That's one big benefit because the truth is, if you have a catastrophic impact with an NCA or NCM chemistry battery, a ternary battery, it can sometimes cause the battery to ignite so quickly and so fiercely that you don't even have time to get out of the car before you'll burn alive. That, in my opinion, is possibly one good reason to not get them. Now, yes, you're probably a great driver, but I can tell you now, in fact, there's a reason about 1.4 million people die every year worldwide on the roads. Generally, it wasn't their fault, or so they thought. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.